Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Boys and girls, today we have a slightly different one on the channel, as we will go through an entire 150 difficulty run here out of the Tombs of Amaskun to show you that it's really not as difficult or intimidating as you might think. If you caught my community post I made a few days ago, September is going to be all about Raids 3, and we will have two videos a week going over gear progression, and of course in-depth boss guides all the way up to the final one during the last week of the month. If this video is helpful to you, go ahead and subscribe with notifications on, like the video, join the Discord, you know the drill. Uh, so how is this video going to work? I'm going to show you my recommended invocations for your first 150 difficulty runs, show you the gear and inventory I personally use, and then we're going to go through all of the puzzles and the boss fights, showing you everything I have learned in the past week and a half. Before we start, two very quick disclaimers, very, very important. This is recorded and uploaded on the 5th of August, and there's a few tweaks coming in Wednesday's update, especially with the supplies within the raid. So just keep that in mind, what you see in the video might not exactly match what you see whenever you're playing this in the future. Uh, and uh, that goes for any change or minor tweak that happens. This will be a very good video for you to know the mechanics overall, and then whatever change happens in the future, you can easily adjust to it. Um, also, finally, before we go in, I am going to do this with my own setup just to show you the mechanics and, of course, to make it faster. If you remember my JAT guide, a lot of people were kind of upset because it was supposed to be a beginner guide for first-timers. I used full Armadil, Tebow, and some people were kind of, um, you know, why are you doing this and not using Black Dehyde and everything? So, whatever you see in my inventory and my gear, go ahead and upgrade, downgrade according to uh, your budget. And, of course, let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so what do I recommend for a first 150 difficulty run? This is going to work for solo or with your friends. We are going to have the following. I recommend softcore run uh, to kind of give you some more chances uh, for you to, you know, just in case you die or your team wipes. You're, you're going to respawn with an item called Honey Locust, which acts as food and also prayer potions, just in case you finished all of your supplies, to give you a better chance of finally beating that boss that has given you some trouble. Um, whenever you get more comfortable with it, you can go ahead and run uh, hardcore mode or hardcore run. I personally think it's a lot better if you force yourself not to do any mistakes. You're going to play better, you're going to make better decisions, and of course, uh, that pressure is going to be hopefully good for you not to die during the raid. Um, I also recommend need some help. Even for 150s, the supplies that you get inside, even if they are decreased by 33%, uh, by 33%, it's not going to be game-changing, and you're still going to have some supplies left over at the end of the raid, so don't worry too much about this one, okay? If you really need all of the supplies, go ahead and turn this off and find another invocation that's worth 15 points. We're going to get into that in a second, okay? For your first few runs, I don't recommend any of the walk the path, uh, prayer, uh, reduction on a diet, the dehydration, and overly draining. Just go ahead and run it as you have it right here. We're gonna get into the bosses. First, for Kefri, I recommend Lively Larvae, Blowing Mud. Really easy to do. For Zebak, I recommend Not Just a Head, Arterial Spray, and the Blood Thinners. It is unanimously agreed upon that Akka is definitely the most difficult boss. So, for your first few runs, you don't want any Akka uh, invocations, okay? During my solos, I run Double Trouble because I've already gotten used to it, and it's an easy free two, uh, 20 points. Uh, so, once you are comfortable with the boss, you can go ahead and try this one. It gives you a lot of points. For Baba, I recommend Gotta Have Faith, Shaking Things Up, and the Boulder Bash, because these are, I mean, not free, they certainly give you some challenge, but of course, you want to uh, try these on first if you want to try them off, of course, uh, but these are what I recommend. Mind the Gap and Jungle Japes are kind of annoying if you're not paying attention, and they could potentially end the run, so go ahead and turn those off for, for now. During my runs, I, I do full difficulty Baba, which is not that bad, but for you, might potentially want to try this first, okay? For the final boss, I recommend Acceleration, Penetration, and Overclock. This is going to be slightly more powerful, it's going to attack slightly faster, but it's really not going to be that bad, okay? And you're going to have a lot of supplies anyway, so this is what I personally recommend if you think there's any better setup to run your first few 150 difficulty Tombs of a Mask, go ahead and leave them in the comments below, okay? So that's it about the invocations. As you can see, with 150 difficulty, you have the chance of getting every single unique item, the, sh the Shadow of Tumacon, Masori piece of the pet. It's going to be absolutely amazing, okay? So yeah, let's go ahead and check out the inventory. 
I'm gonna gear up and explain what maybe not every single item does, but uh, yeah, we're gonna check that out. So this is what I personally do. If you wonder how I have my bank like this, go ahead and wait for the video that I'm gonna have for bank organization video. I'm gonna, you know, do an entire uh, section of the video dedicated to this one. But so far, let's go ahead and grab my usual setup, okay? Uh, like I said before, if you see something that you don't have, go ahead and, um, you know, downgrade, upgrade according to what you need. And for my runs, I personally have this. I have four ranged and mage switches, as well as the weapons, which we have a twisted bow and a blowpipe. Uh, I do run the Keras, and it's really nice if you don't have a Rapier or an Osmum Thames Fang, especially for Kefri. Um, but I still bring it because it's pretty overpowered, on, uh, and especially because of the blue one. That was my first drop, and I'm pretty happy about that one. Um, I only use Dragon Claws for two portions of two uh, for one portion of two fights so just for that i don't think it's really worth the how much is it like 113 114 mil you can go ahead and skip this one maybe try to get another special attack weapon it's it's really not that bad i do two full rows of brew restore three prayer potions a dragon dagger well i mean a dds normal dragon dagger whatever you want santhu serum because if you know no one here is running the serpentine helm anymore and it is because as long as you're paying attention uh you're not going to get venomed or poisoned. And if you do, and if you happen to get poisoned, the Samphew Serum is going to do just that, okay? Uh, then I have a Super Combat Potion leading up to the third and the fourth room until you get salts. BGS for a whack at the second phase of the final fight. And of course, my Divine Rune Pouch with both blood and ice spells. If you don't have the Threat of Elitness yet, I recommend um, prioritizing Ice Spells to show you something at the Baba Puzzle Room, which is going to be very important. And then when you have the Threat of Elitness, go ahead and carry both of these spells because it's going to be very, very useful, okay? Um, like I said before, if you see anything that you uh, don't have that if you're still saving up for, go ahead and downgrade, upgrade according to what you have. And in 150 difficulty run, it's really not that bad, okay? You don't need absolute maxed gear. Uh, so yeah, no one's I am ready. We are going to grab the pre-pot, and this is what I personally do. Some people like to um, do Divine Combat Potions, but those only last for 5 minutes, and you're gonna run out of them after your first, um, after your first room, so it's gonna be a little unnecessary in my personal opinion, okay? So yeah, onto the Tombs of the Mask we go. My preferred... Um, I would say, what do you call this one? My preferred uh, path is Zebak, Kefri, Baba, and Akka. And then the final boss. I think these are incredibly easy, and I'm going to show you how, okay? Uh, in the Zebak puzzle room, go ahead and drop one brew. Grab the jug here, and I personally prioritize these southern, uh, these southern ones. One of my friends showed me that if you stand on that tile, and if you run all the way here, then there's a very, very small chance for you to you know, get hurt, so that's gonna be absolutely insane. Go ahead and stay here, I don't want to take any damage. If you bring the water back to the middle of the room, uh, it is going to have 100 water. However, if you take any damage, it is going to be reduced by 50 and then by 25, so you will potentially have to do this two or, uh, sorry, three or up to um, uh, four times if you're not really paying that much attention. Uh, as you can see, some crocs are going to spawn. I like to wait for them to, um, you know, to move and so I can freeze them. Because if they get to the middle of the room, uh, it is going to be pretty, pretty annoying. So now I wait for the spikes to go off, and hopefully this is not going to damage me. Now, if it doesn't actually touch you, as you can see, the croc is going to, you know, play some nasty tricks. If that wasn't the case, then obviously I would have done it. Now, if this happens to you, if you have 100 water back, you can just let the crocodile attack it. Because once you get back, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. Alright, so we're going to grab this one. Very nice. So as long as I get... Uh, more than, what is it, uh, more than 50 in this upcoming one, then that's going to be pretty good to go. Okay, so as you can see, I am going to stand, okay, so I took some damage, so as long as I have 50 in this next upcoming one, okay, and there we go, right? So even though I took two, like, bits of damage, we still, you know, that's still good to go, that was a terrible puzzle room, and especially because I'm doing an in-depth, uh, like, walkthrough, telling you everything I'm thinking, it's, uh, it's going to get uh, kind of rough, you know, at some places, okay? Be mindful, this is not going to be the perfect run. Uh, this is just going to show you that, you know, it's perfectly doable. All right, so I equip my melee gear. I drop another broom, equip the Bandos God Sword Piety, and then wait for Zebak to actually uh, do, like, an attack. Uh, so, for example, we're going to do this one, then walk back. That was a zero, that was kind of stupid. And then we do another one. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Well, this guide is not starting off on the right foot. 
Uh, go ahead and pray, uh, uh, sorry, switch to Rigor, of course. And off we go. Now, no defense reduction means that this is going to be a pretty slow fight. Even at 930 HP, it is, um, you know, even with a Twisted Bow, it may potentially still take some time. Um, so, I guess right here, when Zebak is at level 0, if you want to go ahead and try Walk the Path or want to try to do it in, like, higher levels, you will see that what's going to be different is that Zebak is going to attack a lot, a lot faster. What happens with this one, you want to prioritize the jugs that are here. You can shoot them mid, like, travel or whatever, and they're going to clear a 5x5 five five area wherever you actually smash them. Okay, so you're going to have this one. Go ahead and care with the Protect from a Mage. And after a couple of ticks, I don't know if at higher difficulties you have, like, less time to actually do it. I think it's, like, almost the same, so uh, you're good to go. All right, um, so I guess to kind of explain what these do... Uh, if you do the Zebak, oh, that was a 67 max hit, by the way. Whenever you see rocks falling, whenever Zebak spits them out, you will need to actually smash the jugs. If you are waiting for the um, waves, you can actually smash these jugs, and it's going to clear another 5x5 five five area. And that is going to be pretty useful if you are looking to, you know, have some, like, more safe spaces, I guess, uh, during the wave attack. So what I was going to say, if it spits out rocks with the jugs, that means that you have to push them. But if it only throws out both Acid and the Jugs, that is when the wave attack is going to come. You can obviously push the... Uh, you can push the Jugs diagonally, as you can see, and boom, there we go. Uh, a big tip is that if you make the Jug crash into the rocks, it's going to instantly explode. And that is basically going to be it. You're not going to have to uh, hit it. However, remember that because it goes diagonally, the Jug can potentially go through the rocks if they are, like, in a, in a diagonal spot. That actually screwed me over a little bit um, in one run, in one of my runs. It happened on stream, and people made fun of me for that one. So, uh, yeah. As you can see, 100... I, I still do not know why this happens, though. I, I think that's a bug that they're gonna address, that sometimes, whenever you're attacking Zebak, uh, your character is just, like, literally gonna run up to it, and it's it, it can potentially screw you over. So, uh, just be mindful of that one, okay? So, next one, we're going to go for a Kefri. Doing this solo is very easy, and I'm going to show you how. Alright, so let's go through the, the path of Scabaras. So, we have these four puzzles. Like I said, I am going... Uh, I like to run... Let's see. Oh, this one is, this is actually perfect. I like... I don't like this one, because it's just like trial and error that can potentially take, like, so long. Alright, so for this one, it's just basically a memory game. Okay, I believe I have this one. I actually forgot if it's... The southern one first. Oh, let's go. And I believe it's just the north one. Oh, this game is so free. Uh, so if you do that incorrectly, it's going to damage you and you're going to have to do that all over again. I don't like this one. I, I am personally a Chad flipper. If you don't like to flip, you're honestly coping and I don't know what to tell you. I much rather take the 20 damage, get get it over quickly. Uh, in the in-depth Kefri guide that I'm going to have, I believe, next to Thursday, like in, in two Thursdays, I believe, I'm going to show you how to do that easier. Uh, without taking any damage, so that would be it. In this final puzzle room, here's what I do. I uncover all of them, writing down the first letter of each of these. So we go knife, uh, diamond, star. If your memory is good, you don't have to do this. Star, and then we have a W, and this is going to be a boot, okay? So you go to the other one, and I am going to remember the first three that I have here. So it's knife, boot, and W. Now that I have those th uh, three, knife, boot, W, first I'm going to go for W, which is this one. And then what about the knife? Knife, boot, W? I believe it was this one. So knife. This one is knife, remember. Just just remember the pattern, you, you should be fine. And then the boot. The boot is the last one. Actually, I want to check out... Wait, uh, I actually can't do that. Okay, otherwise it's just going to screw it up. Okay, so I grab this one, which is the closest one. It is the diamond. And of course, diamond is number two. Oh, that was actually the star, my bad. <laughs> As you can tell, my short-term memory, if you've been on my live streams for some time, you know that my memory is not great. <laughs> uh, but whatever method works better for you, if you have picture-perfect memory, this room is literally not going to be bad for you. If you're, if you're good at math, this is also not going to be a problem, okay? Now, one interesting thing is that I use a Bandos Godsword here. But, to be quite honest with you, it's extremely inaccurate. However, I still do it because, you know, any any sort of, like, damage reduction could potentially help out. So, go ahead and turn Piety on. Oh, that was a nice 28. So, as you can see, this is going to be a one-by-one one, uh, area of effect, I guess. Go ahead and uh, equip your uh, Defender, your Keras, whatever you have. 
Uh, whenever there's bugs around you and whenever Kefrich stops attacking for a little bit, that's when it's going to do the dung attack. I like to stay in the corner or um, wherever the um, uh, wherever the previous attack just landed, because the less sections you have to this, the more freedom you're going to have, and I believe that's it. When the first shield is depleted, you're going to have a spitting scarab, which is going to throw, well, acid at you. This can potentially poison you if you do not protect from melee. Once you have a killed um, that one specifically, you can go ahead and equip your blowpipe and yeah, just go ahead and uh, get to work on this one. Uh, really good tip, if you have blood spells, you are always going to do your, um, you're gonna, you're always gonna do a 10, all of these are always max hit. So as you are killing these swarms, make sure to keep in mind that these flying scarabs are just like gonna head at you and uh, it's really not that great. Uh, so yeah, if you have blood spells, you can use it on those because it's gonna be a 10, uh, uh, like, you, well, I mean, you're gonna guarantee a hit and, well, that's basically going to heal you if you are in a tight situation, okay? Uh, you wanna go ahead and kill the, well, I mean, you ideally wanna kill most of them with your team, but prioritize the dark ones because if you don't kill them in time, you will see that there's gonna be agile scarabs coming and they're gonna be kind of annoying, especially throughout the, the later stages and especially if you're not praying against the ranged. All right, so this is what I personally do, just go ahead and move. Whenever Kefri stops attacking, go ahead and um, get next to the dung and that's going to basically uh, be the way to keep the dung in just like literally one space. All right, I wanna pay very close attention because this is almost done. And during the second shield, you will see that there's going to be an arcane scarab. Oh my god, I almost exploded. You really, really want to kill this one extremely fast, because if it charges all of the red uh, scarabs around it, and if it's still there, if it doesn't fly away, I believe it flies away right here. I still don't know the, like, the, like, how do I even say this? I still don't know when or why it flies away. There's been times in which I just do one hit, it flies away, and uh, that's pretty much it. But there's times in which it goes down to like 10% HP and it's still in this corner. By the way, pray for melee. Uh, if you... So yeah, I don't know where it is. Just make sure to kill it as fast as humanly possible. Please do so. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna... It's gonna be quite unpleasant. <laughs> Alright. Um, after that, you obviously want to pray... Did, did you see that 117? That's insane. Um, so yeah, you then want to pray for melee. Kill that other dude. Otherwise, if you don't kill those, they're gonna heal... Kefri for a little bit, and it's really not that bad, but, I mean, the faster you can do this, the better. Uh, by the way, I completely forgot to take my Super Combat Potion, go ahead and do that. Once you do that for a third and final time, Kefri's real a um, HP, real health, is going to show up. 53 max hit, very nice. And, yeah, this is all smooth sailing from here, as long as you avoid the fire, which if you do Vorkath, you definitely know this. And, of course, well, once you do that, boom, easy game, all right? So, so far, go ahead and grab your Ceridum and Brew if you dropped anything, that's nice. There have been a couple of times in which I forget a like some supplies on the ground, I leave and, uh, oh boy, that's really not great. So, here is the Helpful Spirit. What I personally always do is that I go for power. Uh, in this one, I only have one Salt, meaning that I can only use it for Akka and then for the final boss. This is not ideal, but I'll still choose it, because in the last one, I go for Ambrosia. And the life pack doesn't have any salts. And for this one, you could potentially also use this one, but Ambrosia is just so good. So here, I still need Adrenaline, and then the last one, I do need Ambrosia. So sadly, I'm going to choose a power one, even though there's only one salt. That's not ideal. If there's only one, go ahead and save it for... for uh, Wait, press one. Go ahead and save it for Akka. And then for the final boss. If you have two, you can use them one right here because it's going to help you for the for for all of the for all of the monkeys, and um, yeah, and also it's going to help you for Baba. Go ahead and drop uh, some things because you will need some potions and a hammer, and this is going to be a mess. I'm going to explain why. So this is a wave. Uh, based the puzzle room. If you have done the theater of blood, this is just basically the Nyla room. Uh, the good thing about this one is that the Amount and the type of monkeys is going to be the same for every wave. However, they're going to have different spawns. If you are a uh, What do you call this? If you are a theater of blood chad, by the way, you want to do both pillars Vents or heal on each other if uh, you are running this with a team If you are a theater of blood chad, uh, you know that the Nyla room is basically same spiders Same spawns. This one is same monkeys, but different spawns. So 
Here we have a shaman to melees, but they may potentially come out of uh, different rooms in the future, okay? Now, if you have blood spells and if you're low on HP, you can get these to clump. Boom. Easy game. So that's a full heal. There's been times in which I'm like down to 30, 40 HP, and then one good blood barrage, boom, it's just gonna, it's just gonna get you back to full HP. My switches here are still a mess, you know, I still cope, you know, with them. Uh, and this is why I still run my inventory tags. Remember, if you make fun of inventory tags, uh, you've never had any, any female interaction in your life, so, oh well. Uh, if you make fun of people for having this... Honestly, I pitied you a little bit. <laughs> anyway, go ahead and freeze it. This is why I use the freezing spells, because the Cursed Baboon can definitely drop some acid and they're gonna venom you. And if you don't have, uh, a Serpentine Helm or, like, uh, maybe your, your Santhu Serum, it's really not gonna be that, that great. One thing I haven't explained, uh, well, I mean, two things that I haven't explained, is that these clear baboons, the volatile baboons, are going to get next to you, and then once they are one tile away from you, or, like, literally next to you, they're gonna explode and they're gonna deal, like, 30 or 40 damage. It's 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 kind of crazy, so you really want to avoid that. Um, go ahead and take care of the pillars, the vents, and as you do this, just go ahead and, um, you know, prioritize these. The priority, in my personal opinion, so, for example, my priority... I always freeze the cursed baboons, then I go for the shamans, kill them as fast as possible, and then whatever's left, so, so for example, there's a trapped volatile baboon right here. I just wanna get it over with, just go ahead and make, it, uh, make him explode. He goes like, I'm about to blow, right? Uh, I'm buzzing. If, if you know that reference, you're a degenerate, but oh well. Go ahead and equip your mage stuff, clump them together, easy again. Okay, that's maybe not that great, but you know. So, priority. Always go for. Always freeze the cursed baboons. If you can. And if, especially if you don't have Serpentine Helm, if you have Sand Fuse, that's nice. So, first, freeze cursed baboons. Then, go ahead and kill the shamans. Because the more of these, the more damage they can do. And then, you know, whatever basically you're like weakest to, you can. Wait, I mean. There we go. There are three exploding monkeys coming in through, which I don't like, so very careful with those. Just, just really want to be really, really careful. This one is really easy, but you can mess up very, very quickly, and you can definitely get killed <laughs> uh, without you noticing. All right, so freeze cursed, baboon, uh, cursed baboons, kill shamans, and then uh, go ahead and take care of the um, with with the uh, exploding ones because they can definitely mess you up. So just go ahead and wait for them to you know respawn. Do this a three by three, and I believe that's pretty much it for the room. Um, obviously, very important to note, you really want to attack each monkey with the proper style. Red is melee, green is ranged, the blue is magic, so you want to kill the red ones with mage, kill the blue ones with ranged, and kill the green ones with melee. If you don't kill them, or if you don't attack them with the proper style, they have crazy high defense, and you kind of really, you know, and you're not going to do a ton of damage, so that's not going to be great. All right, what's next? So here, if I have two salts, this is where I would uh, grab a, another one, but I don't. So we're gonna cope and hope, and I am going to do this. Now, I have these tiles marked because if you have mined the gap, this and all of the, like, like tiles, I would say, not below, but like here, south, and then from this one, north, and there we go. Uh, you want to avoid that 7x7, seven seven. that's going to be kind of big, but the points that you get for that... As soon as Baba stops, um, I would say, focusing you, that's where you want to run, okay? Whenever you see these rocks, you kind of want to uh, run to them and just basically camp near those rocks. When Baba throws that big rock at you, uh, if you're not next to a rock, it's basically going to be like a... You know, this scales according to difficulty. Today I was doing an expert one. I didn't, or I guess it glitched out, and I didn't make it in time, and it basically one-shot me for an 89 in expert mode, so that was really bad. Whenever you have this, I do not have my salts active, meaning that I am not going to one-hit KO the boulders. If I do rigor, however, you can actually do it. So let me show you. First, I'm going to show you how if you don't do this, you're not going to one-shot one, one it. If you're not salted up, if you're not like 99, it can get kind of rough. In the next boulder thingy, I'm going to hopefully show you how you can completely skip it, and it's really not going to be that bad. This one, just go ahead and do it. If you have mined the gap, the, the gap active and Baba knocks you back, then that is going to be a one-hit KO, and you're going to fall in these uh, tiles, and that's that's pretty much it for the run, okay? So, careful, just obviously go ahead and uh, take care of your prayer. Now, I want to start doing this. Now, you kind of want to time 
the shockwave and also when it throws a boulder, right? What I mean by that is when it stops attacking you for a little bit, as you will see right... No, not here. So, sway. Careful. Oh, uh, there we go. So, you kind of want to time it so you move away from this one as you start running towards a boulder. So, that is going to, you know, be pretty nice in the long run. Now, I'll try to do this here. Not guaranteed, because sometimes you have very, very bad spawns. And you just basically have to run like a degenerate. So, let me come right here. Easy game. And... Oh, dude, this is exactly what I mean. Sometimes you have to zigzag through it. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's, uh... That's not gonna be nice. <laughs> Alright. Uh, in the guide, is specifically... Oh, oh, my God. Ah, there we go. There's there's a mistake. That should have that should not have happened. Uh, in the guide, I'm gonna show you how to do the skip, which uh, you, you can basically do the... Uh, what do you call it? You can basically... Hit the boulders, and if you make it on top and hit Baba, it basically cancels out the boulder attack, and you can do this a lot, a lot faster, okay? So, go ahead and camp here for a little bit until I see that it throws a boulder. There we go. So, you want to stay in the vicinity of the rock, otherwise it's like, um, it's going to do massive amounts of damage. I don't know how it scales, but trust me, you may potentially get one shot <laughs> eventually, okay? So, that was a really, really good Baba. I consider Baba, I mean... Zebak, Kefri, and the Baba, I don't use any supplies whatsoever, which is uh, very good. Even in, in, in expert mode, I'll... I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, be... Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to show off, but I've gotten to the point where you can potentially do Zebak, Kefri, and Baba with no supplies, okay? Alright, so for this one, you want to store your pickaxe. You go ahead and grab a, a dragon one if you can. And right now, I am going to try to do this one cycle. But there's a possibility that because of my lag, because of my Mexican internet, we may potentially not see it. But trust me, I'll, 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 give, you, I'll give you the best I possibly can. So what's going to happen? Obviously, careful with the orbs of darkness. If you run into them, it's going to deal anywhere between like 14, 20 damage or something. For this one, I got really lucky and I only need one uh, mirror, okay? You place the mirror, you can rotate it like clockwise or whatever. And the cool part about this is that you can actually push it from whatever direction into whatever direction you want. So, during the next one, I am going to go here, push it, and then I want to stand one tile away. Oh, that was not it. Okay. So, you can basically count the ticks. As soon as you see the light come out, or you can basically predict it, spam the obelisk like a degenerate, and there is a way to one tick, um, one cycle this, okay? Sadly, I wasn't able to show it to you. We're going to have to go through this once more, uh, once again. I can basically blame the lack for that one, as I live in Mexico, and yeah. Alright, so for this one, this one is also pretty easy. There's another mirror right here. I don't know why, but the lower invocations, I believe the easier the puzzles are gonna be. I don't know, it just kind of feels like it. We rotate it clockwise, and now, because there's no... Uh, you know, I basically only have to do this once, I don't need to, you know, set it up. So basically do this, and just go ahead and wait for that. It's literally one um, hit away from it, so there we go. One, two, and three. Easy again. All right, so we deposit the pickaxe. In a team, this can get a little complicated if you all work together. If each person grabs one uh, mirror, then you know it's, it's really not that bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go for Akka. You want to start with prey from melee as well as with your with your mage setup. Go ahead and salt up any salt sniffers. So go ahead and do this, and here we go. Alright, so how is this going to work? I always start this fight in the southwestern quadrant, okay? When I see that Akka has, al has lost almost 25% HP, I start running towards the middle, okay? Now, I don't have double trouble right here, so there's only going to be one special performed. Okay, whenever the shadows come in, that means that it's 25% HP down. So you want to start attacking any of the shadows, but for subsequent shadows, there we go, there's the, uh, this one. Oh, that was snow, right? That's fire. Okay, so that's a square. Easy. So do this one. You can actually attack the shadows from the very corners of each one of these. So from this one, I can basically attack this one. From this one, I can attack this one. So it's not going to be that bad. Now make sure to be there in the exact middle. Otherwise, if you are just one tile out of it, and if you attack the shadow, it's going to drag you in, and it can potentially um, do a lot of damage. So be really careful with that one, okay? Once the shadows appear, I was not wearing my bandless chest plate for some reason. You have to attack another one. What I like to do is run in a clockwise, um, like, pattern, I guess. There we go. There are, there's the orbs, and I can basically start attacking. Because it doesn't do two attacks at once, 
if you run this on a solo, by the way, you need to pr uh, pray mage for that one. <laughs> don't, don't do what I'm doing. And I, and I just noticed that I did exactly that. Uh, I completely forgot about my, um, <laughs> my supplies in this one. Oh, well. Uh, but you will see that it's not going to be that bad. I, I can already hear your comments. I, I, I know you're flaming me for it. Okay, so there we go. That is death. And then lightning. And death again. Go ahead and turn off your prayers for this one. Now, now that we have done magic, mage, and ranged, it is going to go back to magic. So go ahead and equip your magic stuff. All right, so far so good. If you have a sanguine ST staff, if you have a blood, uh, blood fury, it's going to be really, really good. Okay, so we just basically attack this one. The 25% should be coming up, so get ready to switch. And that should be it. Very nice. I believe it's best to use the blowpipe on these brothers, so uh, yeah, go ahead and do that one. I'm running a little low on HP, but I'm going to show you what I do. Okay, so that is the orb attack. If it's the orb attack, you literally don't move and that's it. Uh, that is ranged, however. Every time it does a special attack, it's going to do that. So be careful with that one. So go ahead and come here. You have to stand where there's no shadow, otherwise if I attack Akka here, uh, it's going to take absolutely no damage, okay? So careful. Blood Fury coming in through very, very nicely. There you go. Listen, if you really, really want to heal up in the next one... Oh, whoops. You really want to heal up. Okay, so that's this one. All right, so you want to be slightly above, like, maybe half HP, whatever, because the next portion of the fight gets a little interesting. All right, so let's see. We're going to do this one. Go do the full switch, even though that's not necessary. All right, there we go. So here's the important part about this. Pray Mage to reduce damage from the orbs. Attack Akka once. Attack it twice. And then if you have any sort of special attack, go ahead and drop it. I am about to take a hit, so be careful with that one. Uh, oh! Oh, that was so good. Uh, you know, I took a... I, I just took one hit at the end. All right, so um, as you can see, even though I don't have my row of brew restore it's really not gonna be that bad all right here's where things get really really interesting you can go ahead and pick the life one or the chaos one depending if you see the ambrosia i normally go always power first and then either life or chaos later i don't really have any use for these so we're gonna leave these ones and obviously we have more bruce in here so that's a lot better i will go for chaos but remember if you're during your first couple of runs this is definitely definitely needed okay uh, I just noticed that maybe the Akka fight was, I mean, maybe not lacking, but it was a lot faster than it normally is because I'm used to run, I'm used to running 200, 250, and like just today I started doing 300s, and that fight takes an obscene amount of time, so if you have any questions, please make sure to leave it in the comments below, get on Discord, ask me anything that you want, and that would be nice. Before this, I like to fix up my inventory just to, you know, have everything ready. I still have three minutes of uh, salt, so I'm not gonna do that, and yeah. All right, so let me go ahead and grab this. Just go ahead and put this one here. I'm not going to use the cloth in this one, so it's not that bad. And for this one, I grab Adrenaline. And what I do is I close it. I put... You can actually organize these right here, okay? I take my... Well, I mean, I already took an Adrenaline, but it's whatever. So whenever I do right-click, withdraw one, my Ambrosias are going to be up next. And then if I lose a lot of health during the fight, I will do withdraw all after using all of my supplies. So that's going to be kind of nice. This is definitely the part where there's many, many things to juggle. And you really want to, uh, I would say, like, <laughs> there's so many things to keep track of. And that's what the in-depth guide is going to be about. But I'll try to do my best at showing you what I'm thinking through the entire fight, okay? So when you are ready, go ahead and uh, check that your salts are up. And yeah, click begin. Piety, I personally like to block this path because I like that during the final phase of the fight, I deal with Zabak and Baba. If you are running the invocation called Aerial Assault, the Kefri, what do you call it, the Kefri bomb is going to be a 3x3. And that is also going to affect the final phase of the fight. So those 10 points are really nice during Kefri. However, if you come here and if you do the other Warden, that 3x3 three three might potentially come in very, very counterproductive in the final phase of the fight. First is going to be the Pyramid Light. The next one is going to be some little, like, orbs or balls whenever it charges all the way. If you're running a group, you want to stay away from each other in, uh, during the small ones. For the big ones, you want to death the dots, like, maybe here at the, at the like, very, like, middle of the uh, pillar or whatever. If you do this and if you clear it as a pillar or as an orb is coming your way, 
you do not need to worry about the damage unless it's like literally right next to you. So yeah, that is the first phase of the fight. Very doable in 150s, even if you don't have like a ton of like super high end, um, like what do you call it, like super high end uh, weapons. It's very doable. Uh, as you can see, the ranged attack looks like a, like it's throwing a um, like like a baseball. Careful with this one, by the way. Oh, I'm gonna take a hit. No problem. You can go ahead and skip this one. That is the divine power, whatever you call it. Baseball. So that is ranged. That is another ranged attack. So whenever you hear that, like whenever you hear a different sound, that is what you want to do. What I like to do here, uh, that is the attack, by the way. So careful with that one. Do this. And then just keep attacking, okay? I want to get this ready. And then obviously have this one ready here too. Because the... This portion is coming, and you really, really want to be on the lookout for this one. Okay, it falls. Clear it. Special attack, piety. Attack like a degenerate. You can do one, two, three, four, five, and I believe that is a BGS spec. I think I'm going to be one tick too late. Yeah, that was one tick too late. Uh, but, you know, if, if you do it slightly faster than me, you can you can definitely do that. So, Prey Rigor, uh, if you kill, or if you start with this Warden, you're gonna have to start with Magic. If you start with the other one, you're gonna have to start with Ranged. I guess a good speedrunning strategy could be that you can do the other Warden, and then if you have a Tebow, and if you start with Ranged, the first one is gonna go so much quicker, and even if you have, like, three downs, then that's basically going to be it. As you can see, the Adrenaline Potion is still active uh, in my boost stats. So I do this one, this one... That one, and honestly, I just run the Karis because the Claws don't do that much damage, the BGS and the Fang are slower. So I basically do this one. So 42. Let me see if I can do one more, and then maybe we can get it with this one. Probably not, though. Ah, that was only one away. I could have potentially done it, but, <laughs> you know. Three phases. So a two, a two phase is definitely possible. But it's it's very, very specific. If it's not... Maybe I need to get better, and I'm just coping, but you can let me know in the comments. Uh, a three down is definitely nice. Jagex did a change to this, where... Oh! Okay, so this could potentially happen, and what's happening is uh, not great. Okay, so I take some damage, no problem. Remember, full commentary, I'm not, like, 100% concentrated for this one, so... I could be coping, you tell me. Alright, there we go. Remember, I still have... Ugh, there we go again. <laughs> me wanting to explain everything attacking coming so we have a lot of time a lot of time to move that's perfectly fine okay so just basically go ahead and pray red skull is magic attack whenever it looks at his hand it could also be that like black sludge or whatever it is so very be very very careful with this one that is ranged oh careful with the only fast attack ranged as well very good right at this point as you can see i am not salted up which uh you know another rookie mistake so let's do that one. Pray for magic. As you can see, yeah, this kill is uh, definitely a little slower than, you know, what you would have from a pro gamer. Even though I'm not really pro whatsoever, but... <laughs> Remember, fully commentated. Uh, this is bound to have some mistakes. Now, because this one is, like, literally 1 HP off, just go ahead and, uh, you know, do it with this one. And this is where things get very, very interesting, okay? I am going to withdraw one and one, have my Ambrosias ready. What, did I just drink my Ambrosia? No, I didn't. Oh, oh, that was close. That actually scared me a little bit. All right, so during the final fi uh, phase, pray rigor, whatever you have, it's going to start. You're going to stand at the right, at the left portion, and then in the middle. It's going to be the same, All right? These attacks are going to be very manageable. If you do uh, overclocked two, it gets a little slower, and then in insanity, you have like literally one tick to react to the, to the attacks, okay? So, definitely be careful with that one. So far, 31 minutes raid. Not so bad for me explaining every single thing I am thinking about. But every, I believe, 20 or so HP, you're gonna have these red skulls. You're gonna equip your melee weapon. One tick every single one. Boom. Do some damage to it. Alright, very nice. So, again, stand on the right. I basically mark these tiles to let me know where to stand. Stand on the left. And then stand in the middle. As you can see, I have my Ambrosia as emergency, but I you would normally want to save them until the very end of the fight, just to, just in case you can choke, because I have definitely done it quite a lot. Zebak is going to come during the second, uh, like, one of these attacks, and why am I attacking the final boss with a Karis? 
The first spirit is going to come at the um, second red skull face. And the next one is going to come after two more. If you blocked the left warden, you're going to deal with Zebak and then Baba. If you blocked the right warden, you're going to deal with Akka and then Kefri. And like I said, if you have the invocation where Kefri's bomb attack is 3 by 3 it can get really, really messy in this part of the fight, and you really, and you, and it's, it's, you know, you're gonna have to move, like, slightly more, but it's really not that bad. Zebax, like, pretty much everyone's attacks are gonna be the same. Baba and Kefri are gonna do attacks that are basically, like, you have to avoid it, and you basically have to stand somewhere else. And then Akka and Zebak are going to do attacks that you can actually react to, and it's not gonna be terrible. So as you can see, uh, you have enough time to react where you see the Jug or the Rock. Okay, so be careful with that one. That is a rock. Okay, pretty decent, pretty beautiful so far. No major mistakes as far as I would know, as far as my eye can see. My blind brown eye. So stand on this one. That is a rock. To my knowledge, honestly, I don't think I've paid attention enough attention to this. But I think Zebak's attacks are completely random. For Akka, it does three attacks. Either... I was going to attack with Karis again. Uh, Zebak, sorry, uh, Akka does three attacks with one style, and then it slams the ground, and then it does another two. Uh, sorry, it slams the ground, switches, and then another three. Alright, this is coming very close, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to get my stuff ready for a cheeky Dragon Claw special, okay? Okay, there we go. So, I equip my melee stuff. This is very, very slow, potentially. Careful. Drink Adrenaline. Bandos Tacits, by the way. This, I am still kind of bad at this phase of the fight, as you can probably tell. But uh, this is all about improving. As long as you improve every single run, that's what you want. Oh my god. And then once I don't have any more of these, what I like to do is just like drink Ambrosia. After that, because uh, if you pay attention to the Dragon Claw change, you can definitely lose some HP and you kind of don't want that. And as long as you pay attention to the lightning and everything, be careful and pray accordingly. Move away. Move away from the lightning from this one. That is going to be your 150 difficulty run. Uh, as you can see, no supplies used for this one, so that's pretty nice. Uh, and I would have had more supplies if it wasn't for the fact that I forgot them at Akka, so um, yeah. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to proceed. If you want to go ahead and milk it, just like you can potentially slowly walk towards a purple at uh, both the chambers and, of course, the... Um, what you call it, and um, the uh, TOB. What you can do, zoom in all the way, and if you mark this tile, you can milk it, okay? I've gotten one purple on stream. Can we do it? Three, two, one. <gasps> what? Ah, no purple for the video. That would have been amazing. So, if you see purple, it's gonna be in the middle, and yeah. Oh, <laughs> no way! On video, I have the Corruptor, dude. That's absolutely insane. For the video, too. That's really, really good. So, I don't get a purple, but I get a unique. That's very nice. I don't think I'm gonna be rocking it, but, you know, let's go ahead and, uh... Let's go ahead and uh, grab this. My loot is worth around... Uh... How much is it? I don't see a loot... I don't know. Whenever you're ready, leave Osmumpton, and that is it for the raid, okay? Like I said before, probably I left a lot of things unanswered. Uh, I probably spoke way too fast. I probably forgot a couple of things I was uh, I was I was gonna say, uh, but hopefully those questions are going to be answered during the in-depth boss guides, and hopefully, hopefully we can potentially uh, get some nice uh, juicy guides for you, and hopefully you can try the tombs of a mascot yourself. Okay. Before we leave, I want to give a massive thank you to all my channel members. You boys and girls are absolutely insane, and honestly, your support just means the world to me. I don't know what I would be doing without you, and um, yeah, really, really thankful for all of your support. You can go ahead and check out the like a monetary subscription on the channel, click the join button, see all of the cool perks you can get in the Discord, in the live streams, and of course, in the videos. That being said, I hope you guys are enjoyed for this month, because we're going to have videos both on Monday and Thursday for the Tombs of a Mascot. And yeah, after that, we're going to get, get back to our regularly scheduled uploads. Any questions, join the Discord, leave them in the comments below, and that will be pretty much it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck in the raids. If you have any questions, let me know. And yeah, happy raiding. So I'll see you soon. I'll see you on Thursday for another video. And also, I'll see you in the daily live stream. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace.